A winter of discontent. German farmers, fed up with government policy, take to the streets, making their voices heard. So why are German farmers protesting? German farmers are protesting over tax increases on both agricultural vehicles, so tractors, and diesel. So for the longest time, there was a tax break on diesel for, for, for farm vehicles and so on. And uh, farmers have essentially said, look, this is really making it difficult, difficult for us to sustain ourselves. Uh, because not only are you increasing the taxes over the last few decades, you've made our profession more and more bureaucratic. Running a farm right now is like requires two accountants. It's uh, it's 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 very complicated to get through all of those burdens of regulation, and and you're putting this burden on farmers who you know provide good food for consumers. And right now we are in a cost of living crisis where consumers are asked in Europe to pay more and more for food, and to now also punish those who provide safe food to consumers, I think is really unfair. Basically, the reason that process protesting is because uh, the, the government has planned to increase the fuel taxes uh, and to increase the taxes on the farmers, on the farmers' vehicles and so on. And uh, this is being done, uh, one reason that they said it's because it's, it's going to be good for the climate. Uh, and of course, other reasons as well is because of austerity measures. Uh, so we are seeing these things happening uh, with the government cutting down on support for the farmers and the farmers are not very happy about it. And we've been seeing similar things happening all across Europe. Something, something will have to change. I think what we notice is that in terms of the way the farmers have protested, that is also very different. Uh, over the last two years, there were climate protesters who glued themselves to the roads in Germany, and they weren't even ready to make a car, like to 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 open up the streets for emergency vehicles emergency first responders the farmers in germany have not done that they always make way for emergency first responders so i think that already shows the goodwill of the farmers in the, in the way that they protest um and 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 yes there the solutions need to be found here because we just cannot have a good food system if our farmers don't stand on solid financial ground i mean that is just a reality i heard some people say like Greenpeace was one of those, for instance. Greenpeace said, oh, but the farmers had a good harvest in 2023. Well, if you increase the taxes, that tax increase also applies for the bad harvest. And just to just to, you know, just sort of focus on one year where the harvest turned out to be good. I think that's just such facile political point scoring and, and spin doctoring that is that is very emblematic of the environmental policies that we see all over Europe. We just focus on one issue. And we say, well, if all of us just changed our habits, we could change the planet. Well, unfortunately, there's an economy behind it. There's people who work in these industries who need to make a living. We need to be able to afford food. We already pay a lot more for food than, for instance, our American counterparts. So we need an efficient agricultural system. Yes, we do need to watch out for protecting our environment, but we also need to do it in a way that doesn't bankrupt the people who've been working in this and who had family businesses running in this industry for, for decades, if not centuries. So I think we need to be very careful when we mess with our food system. And as the protesters continue to make their concerns heard, the German government is hoping to find a resolution. The government came with this uh, so-called compromise where they were going to, instead of making the taxes, uh, increase taxes immediately, they would do it gradually over a few years. The farmers said that uh, that was not good enough and that they would continue the protests. And now, of course, we will have to wait and see. Uh, what the farmers do, but uh, it seems like they have been pretty, uh, pretty firm on their stance uh, and not backing down because, after all, this goes back to their livelihood. Uh, the average farm in Germany is looking to lose around five thousand euros per year in these increased costs, um, and of course, that's going to cause a lot of farms to go bankrupt, to go under, and this is about their livelihood and they. Yeah, I, I think we will be seeing more more of the protests if uh, if if it has to, if if it has to be between the livelihood or or between having a livelihood and not having a livelihood. I definitely think the farmers will be <laughs> will be standing firm that they want to have a livelihood. They want to be able to to keep on farming, to keep giving us the food that we need. And uh, yeah, because it's kind of insane to me to see this climate policy is being used 
in order to undermine for countries to undermine their own food security to undermine their own uh yeah to undermine their own, own food security in in, in under this use of uh, climate change it's it's madness but um yeah that's that's the world we live in unfortunately the german government is currently seeking a compromise what they say is that they won't increase taxes on agricultural vehicles and they will phase out those tax breaks of the past uh, so that that means essentially that over the next few years farmers will increasingly pay more for diesel which isn't quite the quick jump that the german government initially wanted but it's not enough for farmers. Farmers continue to protest. Just this week, 30,000 farmers descended on Berlin to show their disapproval and say that they are not backing down. Now, it's possible that the German government will find some sort of a compromise and maybe some bureaucratic alleviation. And the finance minister has alluded to, to some of that. But I just don't see it happening right now. The farmers are very angry. When the finance minister spoke at their protest, he was booed. He could barely uh, barely say a word. So I think it's, it's just very telling that the mood is really not looking out for compromise right now. And I can totally understand where the farmers are upset. The farmers have experienced an influx of support from around the world. Popular TV presenter and farmer Jeremy Clarkson has spoken out against the issues European farmers are facing. In the Times, Clarkson wrote, The Green Movement has come along and announced that it is bad for the upper atmosphere to grow food and we must all stop. And because modern politicians have all become enslaved by idiotic left-leaning pressure groups, they've nodded, said OK, and decided to cut farming subsidies to the bone, which means Europe's farmers are screwed. They can't make anything approximating to a living wage without government help and they can't put up prices because the supermarket system doesn't allow it. Meanwhile in Germany, support from the locals has been strong as well. That is the most fascinating thing because despite the farmers having blocked roadways across the country, 80% of Germans who have no affiliation with the agricultural sector in polling say that they support the farmers right now. And the polling of the government is equally bad because the government has essentially initially said, look, these farmers, they are just having a little complaint here. What they should do is use electric tractors instead. And also they're all just far right. So they were trying to brandish all the farmers as being sort of in a political corner, which has an even stronger implication in Germany than it does elsewhere in the world. So that has really backfired on the government. The people support the farmers. And that is very similar to what we've seen in the Netherlands before. Polls lately, there is uh, one party in Germany, the right wing alternative for Deutschland, the AFD party. They have been supporting the farmers and it seems like they've been gaining in the polls recently as well. If that's just because of the farmers cause or if there's other things as well, that's uh, difficult to say. But uh, definitely I saw, I saw a poll uh, came out recently uh, from Germany saying that 69 percent of the German people actually support the farmers. And uh, we've seen videos where firefighters, people have been lining the streets, sharing on the farmers as they've been rolling in with their tractors on the streets. So it definitely seems to be a large support for from the people, uh, for, for the farmers, for sure. In 2023, Dutch farmers took to the streets to object to extreme climate goals. These farmers fought back and formed the Farmers' Party, which became a new powerhouse in the Netherlands Parliament. This political implication in Netherlands is creating concern for the current German government. It could actually be the reason why this coalition might not hold, because the current German government is constituted of three political parties, two of which might try to blame all of this on the Chancellor and say, we were not involved whatsoever, just leave us alone. And that might, that might, that might be a cause for early elections in, in, in Germany. What we've seen is that politically in Europe, if you stand against a farmer, you lose. And I think a lot of political parties are finding that out the hard way. The German government is one of them. The Dutch government definitely was one of those as well. Well, not just farmers became politically active by attending protests. They also genuinely created a political party. And it looks like in the current coalition talks in the Netherlands, they might even be part of the next government. So what we're seeing is as the European Union and many European governments have politicized farming. Farmers have made the conclusion that they should become political. And the result of that is that a farmer voice is now part of the political debate over the environment, over the economy as well. Uh, where the government was essentially planning on forcing the farmers to sell their land to the state uh, at a fixed price. Uh, the side on by the government 
So the farmers wouldn't have a say on it. And then they would be banned from starting any kind of new farmers businesses in the whole of the EU. Uh, so really the destroying uh, generational farms, uh, destroying their livelihoods by essentially doing the same thing as what they did in the Soviet Union, uh, seizing the means of production. Uh, so I actually came up with a, a term for it. I call it uh, climate communism, because that's essentially what they're doing. They are using the excuse of climate change in order to gain control of the food supply, to gain control uh, of the farmers, because, you know, we need farmers. Uh, and if we don't have farmers, people are going to go hungry. They're going to come to the government to beg for help. And um, yeah, that's a very clever way to gain control. The attack on farming isn't exclusive to Germany and the Netherlands. It is something we're seeing more broadly across Europe. It's uh, people in People in Europe uh, have been uh, facing increasing, increasing living costs with increased um, uh, rates. That the, the, the interest rates have been going up, uh, which means that the mortgage rates have been going up for people. People are struggling with that. The energy costs have been going up. Food prices have been going up. Fuel prices have been going up. Of course, they've been telling us for years that we need to be switching over to electric vehicles uh, to to reduce our uh, our fuel costs but now with the energy um the <laughs> energy costs electricity being so expensive it's actually kind of expensive to fill up electric cars uh, i know that in norway for example um you have uh, if you want to go and charge at the fast charger with electric cars uh the cost isn't uh, that much different than filling up a a diesel car now uh, that's the, the, so Again, the, we, we, we keep getting told that we need to do this, we need to do that, and then it's going to get cheaper for you, it's going to get better, but then you just get increased costs anyway. I believe that farmers are being targeted unfairly because you, when you raise a tax, you have to provide the argument on whether... Is this justified to alleviate the deficit? Aren't the consequences of you raising the tax not worse than, than what you're trying to achieve? And also, does it achieve the actual goal? And then, you know, both of these questions can't be answered with yes by the German government right now. I mean, just saying use an electric tractor, which costs up to double the amount of one regular tractor, and that in many cases might not even be reaching the end of your field, because by virtue of the battery life not being long enough, and also Germany having amongst the highest electricity prices, this is just not a viable alternative. What are farmers supposed to do? Do you want to go back to doing all of this by hand the way our ancestors did? Like, it's, it's just not viable. If you, if you want to make good environmental policy, you at least need to provide people with the alternative of what they should use instead. And then to be surprised that farmers who have lower yields because we've overregulated them, that now that when you raise their taxes out of desperation, they hit to the streets and they're very loud and they shout you down. Well, that's part of the political process. How are you surprised? You really have to enclose yourself as a politician in a bubble if you think that you can mess with farmers and then not find out the hard way. The farmer protests come as the World Economic Forum meets again in Switzerland. In order to control the people, uh, a very good way to do that is to control the, the food, to control the food supply. And of course, we all heard Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum talk about eating the insects and uh, own nothing and be happy. Um, and that's all, uh, it's, and, and it all plays into this Agenda 2030 as well, because if you followed the um, farmers protest in the Netherlands, one of the big reasons that the government was doing this for uh, planning to force the farmers to sell their land to the state was to meet the climate emissions goals for 2030. Uh, and we've been seeing the same thing happening in Ireland as well, uh, where they are uh, talking about uh, potentially slaughtering uh, several hundred thousand cows in order to reduce the emissions. And again, it goes back to to the 2030 uh, climate goals. Um, and of course, you can go a lot deeper into that as well. Bill Gates, he has been funding the global goals outlined in the Agenda 2030 uh, with uh, billions of dollars. Um, it's it's a whole thing you can do a big study on. But yeah, I think it all goes down to that, uh, as we have seen over the last couple of years, uh, we have seen a huge transfer of wealth from the poor people, from the regular people, to the rich elites. Uh, we have seen a large uh, control um, transfer of uh, power and control as well to the rich people, to the elites. 
uh, as we saw during the pandemic, for example. Uh, and I think this is a continuation of that. Um, I think that is what uh, what we're seeing uh, that's really going on in, in the background here. But for now, in Germany, until the government comes to the table, the protests are expected to continue. I mean, they've already watered down their proposal. It's not enough for the farmers. I think they're right in their assessment that they should continue protesting. But ultimately, it all depends on what the German government will do. Will it will it look at the polling numbers and say, OK, we have to drop all of this. Let's find a different way of raising revenue or maybe cutting spending. That might be a good idea for the German government also. It's really dependent on them. The farmers have made it very clear. We're not out here to annoy anyone or to make anyone get late to work. We're just trying to prove our point that we are part of a food system that is vitally important for the economy and for consumers. And we want those proposals to be taken off the table. I think they are ready for compromise, but all of that is now in the court of the, of the German government. The increase in price for the farmers is going to go on to the rest of people. It's going to be already seeing very high inflation uh, in Europe at the moment with food prices as skyrocketing because of the energy crisis that, we, that we've been seeing over the last few years. And this will only just not that won't help the situation to say it that way with the food prices. And um, yeah, it's it, it's really crazy to see and. Uh, yeah, it's uh, like we saw in the Netherlands, they actually elected um, the right wing uh, Gert Wilders in the recent election. Uh, and he was one of the few politicians who actually supported the farmers. So it seems like in, we saw it first in the Netherlands, they elected the pro-farmer politician. And now we're seeing the, the pro-farmer party at least doing better in the polls uh, as of late. Mm-hmm.